Hello, I am Johnny Perez, and this is Female Study in Watercolor Part 1. Uh, here I'm going to be showing you um, different tools and techniques that I use in my work. Uh, in this demonstration, we will be drawing, inking, and watercolor painting a female face. I also have subtitles available if you happen to want to read instead of listen to the audio. Uh, usually it's helpful to listen to music while you work. I know I like to listen to music instead of um, talking, and I really don't like the sound of my own voice, but I don't know anyone who does, so <laughs> um, there is also that option which can be very helpful. So just turn on the subtitles and you can have those instead. Uh, so to start out with, I got the basic lines um, that you can find in any drawing book. Uh, the um, general rules you find for drawing a head, you start with an egg shape and you have a rounded cutoff mark to place the eyes and about halfway down you have the nose and another halfway down you have the mouth. Um, you can adjust this, obviously, to suit the the features you want to pronounce or any kind of particular features you want to emphasize, you can adjust this to your liking. Uh, I tend to like bigger eyes, bigger noses, and bigger lips, so all of my features are kind of exaggerated in that way. Um, but I find that generally what you're attracted to you will start to see over and over again in your work. and. Uh, I generally like to see diverse features, so I change it up every now and then. Anyway, so art should be fun. Um, should always be fun. It should always be a moment for you to play around with ideas, uh, to let go, to be free. And you never want to balk yourself down with uh, a whole lot of rules and restrictions because that's just gonna um, it's just gonna keep you from expressing yourself um, all the way, and uh, it's gonna limit your your imagination and your creativity. So you just want to you know let go. It's it's kind of meditative. Everybody can do it. Everybody should do it. Um, I believe everyone should make art. So. Um, it's good to have some a few basic rules down and then once you have that you know go your own way make up your own stuff and then you can um, you know maybe develop a style maybe you'll want to become an artist yourself that would be super cool I think um, the more the better the more voices we have the better the more people who are happier creating the better because I think we're all meant to create something in some in some way so that's just a little rant The main idea here is just to have fun, uh, don't boggle yourself down with too many rules, and uh, just express yourself and just have fun doing it. If however you do find yourself wanting to learn a bit more, you can always take a local class somewhere. Um, a lot of people get their start from looking at magazines, uh, pictures. Um, you can always, always, always practice that on your own and get better at doing something. Uh, fashion magazines are great. They have lots of close-ups, um, lots of fantastic looking people. You have lots to choose from there, so definitely um, take something and, and copy it as much as you can. You know, this is just a learning stage. This is a learning environment for you, so don't be afraid to, to use what you need, use what you'd like. Uh, to learn what you need to learn. Um, in that way, uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money trying to, to learn something. Um, you'll notice here that I am going through my features uh, pretty quickly in, in the drawing process. So if you guys do want me to slow this down, I can do more detailed, uh, more focused drawing tutorials later on. Uh, just let me know. Um, otherwise, I just kind of speed through this part. I usually uh, do a few speed paints and I do um, 
I speed up the process so that everything goes by really quickly but I did not do that in this video because I want you to see how long it takes to actually make the marks make the decisions that I make um, not counting the time that I pause to think about my next step um, off camera and in between the cuts but while the camera is rolling um, is exactly the amount of time that I'm making marks on the paper. All right, now we're gonna move on to the inking portion of the video. Uh, in this part, I am gonna be using Micron pens, uh, Pigma Micron uh, by Sakura, um, a Japanese company. Uh, they make excellent pens for inking. They're waterproof, which is the main reason I use them, um, especially uh, putting watercolors and lots of water on your paper. You cannot use regular pens they will smudge they will move and blur your work so definitely you want to find something that is waterproof there are a lot of options out there a lot of great options uh, so just pick the right one you like and you'll see a uh, significant difference between the different kinds of pens uh, micron has lots of different sizes they also come in different colors of ink um, i mostly use black but i have I uh, used a brown one before that creates a pretty cool line, um, a very different effect from black ink, but uh, still really nice. And right here I am using the um, size 05. Uh, later on I believe I use a 02 as well, but this is 05. This is my go-to. It has a good thick line, but not too thick. Um, at different angles it can get a pretty thin line also but uh, the 05 is my go-to pen anytime I'm gonna uh, do some drawing. Um, you'll notice also that these pens can be pretty flat so um, I don't go into it very often but you do want to have some kind of line weight. You could study line weights. Uh, you see a lot of it in comic book art uh, where the color hasn't been added it's just black and white um, drawings and you notice different line weights which is the thickness and thinness of the line creates a lot more interest you know if you just have one straight line you're gonna have a very boring line so to counteract that you'll want to go over the lines you're creating especially when you're using a pen like this uh, it's not a brush type pen. Brush type pens are great for using thick and thin lines, but if you don't have one and you can only spring for the micron size that's available, then definitely you can just go over the work you're doing and vary um, the thickness of the line manually. And um, the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. It may take a little bit of practice because you don't want your work to look too sketchy, too many lines, over the lines, and you'll see, you'll see what I mean uh, once you actually try it for yourself, but you'll get better at it, and then you see here in the eyes, I have thickened the top of the eye, so it looks definitely thicker than the bottom part. It's just more visually appeasing, pleasing to have a variance of line weight. As I sit here and watch the video, I am anxious for the watercolor. I don't know about you, but I love painting. I want to get to the color already. <laughs> but I do want you to see um, the inking process. And I want to say also that the inking process is great when you use a lot of color because you will tend to lose your lines, your pencil lines, under the water and under the paint, and then you won't really know where to go. So inking is how I would usually fix the lines I know I want to see, 
these are the lines that I want to show through the paint and it does give the work a very comic book feel um, watercolors aren't typically used in comic books anymore but they were heavily uh, in its heyday I do love that look um, the comic book style um, big nerd so I like animation I like comic books so uh, of course those are my influences and that's why you'll see them come out in my work and in your own work you'll see your influences come out and even though I am anxiously awaiting the paint I do love a good inking a good black line don't ask me where I get all of these lines in the lips. I think I put more lines in the lips than I do anywhere else, aside from the eyes. Um, but you know that the more lines you put in there, the more focus. You know, the more detail you put into something, the more focus the eye wants to give to it. So that's why there is a lot of detail in the eyes. There are a lot of details in the lips. Um, anywhere around the face, you'll you'll have you know empty spaces. Uh, and those, those are going to be filled in with the paint, so you don't really have to worry about that. But initially, in the inking stage, you'll see where you want to add more emphasis and more more interest. And that is usually where you're going to put most of your detail. All right, now it's getting exciting. We are nearing the end of the inking portion and moving on to the watercolor portion. Uh, first, you're gonna want to brush or erase away uh, your pencil lines that you don't really need anymore and uh, the pencil lines that were used for sketching. Um, you don't really need to erase all your pencil lines, but erasing the ones that you don't want to interfere with uh, clear areas that you want to leave uh, clear in your work. Uh, you'll see here I am starting out with a pretty basic skin tone color. I'm using yellow, I'm using pink, I'm going to throw in a dark brown. Sometimes I throw in um, uh, darker colors like uh, purple or blue, uh, but I'm going to do that later. First I want to start out uh, kind of mapping out where I want to put my color in the skin. So I'm going to start with a, a basic skin tone here. Um, the colors I used first were the yellow gamboge hue, uh, then I used a gray pink, uh, I dipped a little into the sepia, that's the dark brown, and the last color there was the quinacridone gold, it's a very beautiful gold color. I mix all those up, I throw in plenty of water, the more water you throw, the more thinned out it's going to be, the more light it's going to be, and I do want to do that because I'm not going to really... Um, try to focus where I put the paint specifically. I'm just putting in shadows right now. I'm mapping out, like I said, the color where I'm going to put color later. Uh, I'm going to put a lot of colors in there. I love a lot of color in my work, so uh, right now this is probably going to see most of this color go away, um, but it does add a nice base uh, underneath. In this stage, I'm not allowing uh, much time for the paint to dry. Um, here in these areas, you see it's still wet in some parts. And when I start to go in with more color, you'll see that it, it blends in. Um, if you want a lot of blending, you do want to use it while it's still wet. Uh, it's not that necessary, you know, but um, it blends more in the beginning stages while it's wet. Uh, if it dries, um, it's called a glazing in that in that instance you're glazing colors over one another and you can see each layer uh, usually but when you're still wet it's gonna blend more so you're not really gonna see multiple layers there
And I forgot to mention, I should mention that the brush I am using is not a traditional watercolor brush. I love traditional watercolor brushes, but they are really bad for traveling with. So uh, when I'm away from home and away from my studio and palette and brushes, I take along this traveling brush, which is a Pentel Aqua brush. It holds water inside the barrel. I don't need to have water with me. This is super convenient. Uh, it also creates a, a good effect on its own, which is hard to mimic with a traditional brush, but you can continuously pour out water as you need it. Um, which is not something you can do with a traditional brush, so that's kind of an added benefit of having this brush in your brush arsenal. Another good reason to use uh, browns and a regular skin tone color uh, in the beginning is because it brings a lot of warm tone to your underlayer, which would overall bring a lot of uh, warm tones to the overall work. Uh, since I like to use a lot of different colors, um, you can lose a lot of the warmth um, which would give the painting a very cold feel, especially if you were using lots of colors that I like, which are a lot of purples and blues. Um, so to keep that warmth, you want to have something to counteract that. And there you have it. That is the end of the under color prep. Now we're moving on to the bright colors. I'm gonna start out here with a purple. This is um this is the regular, I believe it's a violet color. Uh, you can find this shade of purple pretty much anywhere. It's not a special purple, um, but it has a lot of pigment in it. It's very deep. And I like to use it uh, along with my indigo blue together uh, to create deep shadows. And you can see here, I'm just going to put it anywhere that I want to have um, the darkest shadow, um, mainly around the bridge of the nose and the sides of the face that lead back to the ears. And here I'm going to take... Um, some paints that I already have started to mix up in my palette, but it was originally a Prussian blue, and I'm just going to mix it around with colors that are laying around in my palette, and I'm going to mix that with the purple, and I'm going to put it in there everywhere that I want deep, deep shadows. Another added benefit that you will see uh, in using a very colorful palette all over the face is that you pretty much don't even have to add um, makeup to the face. Um, makeup is usually a really fun part of doing the face, especially on a female face, because you get to use a lot of uh, colors to match uh, anything else you may be doing in your work. but using color everywhere, especially if I'm just doing the face and I only want the uh, attention there, uh, using a whole bunch of colors can save me time and I don't have to think about um, coordinating makeup or anything because all the colors I'm using uh, will pretty much take care of that. Uh, you can almost kind of get away with not doing any makeup because there is already so much color on the face. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. You may not want me to do your makeup. Well, 
Right now, I want to start putting color in the um, mid-tones of the face and uh, to match my deep purples and um, blues that I'm putting in the shadows. I'm going to mix those colors in a very, very watery mixture so uh, that it comes out light. And I'm just going to put this uh, on the edges of the shadows and to cover um, the mid-tone areas. And I'm sorry about any shaking that you might see in the video. Um, in a lot of places I'm holding the camera while I paint and I kind of hard to do both at once, but um, I don't like always having the static image um, overall. I, I kind of like the movement around, so you kind of move, you know, as I'm moving around the page. Um, but I apologize if that creates a little bit of shakiness. You should see the setup I have with a box holding up my camera with rubber bands. I really just can't seem to find my I call it my spider it, uh, meant to hold meant to hold my camera or hold anything in place it has a lot of um, rubber wires on it um, I don't know where it is but I kind of like the extra challenge of putting something together um, that can help me uh, create a more technical video um, with just a little bit extra creativity that goes into it trying to figure out how I'm going to record and how do I set up uh, something like that. You can tell it pretty much covered up um, all of the brown in the work. Uh, it shows a little bit here and there and adds a good, a good mixture of colors. Um, but mostly it's covered up and uh, right now I'm using the gray pink mixed with a, um, a purplish color. Uh, the name of it is Rose of Ultramarine and it is a Daniel Smith watercolor. Um, it itself is already a mixture of colors, um, which you could see. You could see um, if you were mixing it on its own, it would kind of separate into a couple of other different colors. But it's a good mixture of purple uh, to use with the gray pink. Um, it also goes well with the uh, already violet and indigo undertones in the shadow. And I'm basically just covering up, like I said, the mid tones. Uh, with color and you will just barely see in certain areas the the warm undertone we did earlier. Now this one is the I believe it's turquoise blue. I've had this color in my palette forever. I can't remember the exact name of it uh, but I believe it's a, a turquoise blue and then I am going to put this in certain areas to give it a pop and also in the background. Um, 
This is one of my favorite colors, one of my favorite blues to use. It's very bright. So in the bottom, um, around the clavicle, I've put in uh, the blue mixed in with the background. And here I'm bringing the blue into the face. And this is going to help the uh, face and the background appear to um, be in or occupying the same space. Um, so the blue from the background comes into the face kind of as a reflection. So her face... Uh, softly reflects the blue that is surrounding her and it kind of brings a little bit of added, added extra depth uh, to the work. And that does it for the part one video. Stay tuned for the part two video. We're going to work on the eyes and the lips and the hair. And thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.